The power player in Premiere Pro's keying effect collection is the Ultra Key. So let's take a look at that here in this lesson. Go to Working Files, Projects, and go on down to 1403 Ultra Key Effect. We're going to try the Ultra Key on several different clips. We'll start out with this shot of the desert. We have some blue and some red. So let's go to the Effects panel. Go on down to Keying and Video Effects and go find Ultra Key, which of course will be on the bottom since it's U. There we go. Double click on it to load it up in here after we select it. There you go. This works like the color key effect. You need to select a color. So I'm going to go over here and select the color. I'm thinking maybe up toward the darker area here, kind of the middle range between bright and dark. Hold down the controller command key to make that eyedropper get fat so we get a nice 5x5 five five selection. And there we go. It immediately does some compositing. You can see the bottom layer start showing through. Now we need to work on this. There are several properties that we can adjust to make that work much better than it's working now. The best view to have from the output side of things is not the composite. The composite is the ending result. You want to work on the intermediary result, which is the alpha channel. You want to see what's transparent and what's opaque. Whatever's white is opaque. That means that you'll see the top clip wherever it's white. Wherever it's gray or black, you'll see the clip below here, some or all of it. If it's black, you'll see the clip entirely. If you see it's gray, it'll be a mix of the two. So your goal then, as you work with the Ultra Key, is to make the sky as dark as you can, even approaching black, so it'll be transparent. So we need to work at the matte generation. We want to generate a nice matte here. So we work through these various properties. And basically, you just want to try to improve the quality of the matte. Try to make the black go down here without actually making any of this stuff turn gray. That's kind of your goal as you work along here. When you get down to the pedestal, that'll be the one guy that probably is the thing that does the most for you. So we just kind of fine-tune things here as we go along. There's a little bit of transparency here that I don't want to have, but we'll leave it there for the time being and see what happens if we do the highlights. Adjust them a little bit. Make them a little bit darker that way. Okay. If I go this way, it's going to blow them out, so we'll take them down a bit. Look at some of the shadows here and see how that works. You see we're picking up that foreground. Now, we don't want that. Tolerance means how wide of a color range are we going to have. There isn't much Tolerance to tolerance. It doesn't give you much latitude here. We're just going to increase a little bit, but you see it doesn't really change much in tolerance. Pedestal is where you're going to see the most effect. That kind of drops the blacks as you move it down this way. So it makes things darker and darker right along there. Pretty soon, it looks like we're going to get it just about exactly where we want. Now we might want to go back here a little bit and try to fine tune this some more. You want to avoid getting transparency here. So that's a pretty good job, all things considered, since we're keying out a natural blue rather than a solid wall of blue. So that's the end of the matte generation side of things. The next step is matte cleanup. You do matte cleanup when you can see what you're doing. So you go back to composite and take a look at it and take a look at your results, which looks kind of cool actually. Matte cleanup allows you to kind of pull the matte in, push it out a bit, soften the edges a bit, that kind of stuff. So let's take a look at the choke. See if we can pull the matte in or out. See, we're pulling it in now, bringing it closer to the objects there in the foreground. There it's out, there it's in. That's a little better, I think, a little tighter. You can soften the edges a bit. There you go. Look for areas of contrast. Well, that really is improving things a lot there. It really brings it down to the ground there where the contrast is greatest. The midpoint doesn't seem to make that much difference as we get down there. I don't think we can fine tune it too much more. This way is not where we want to go, but down here, a little bit more fine tuning. Well, I think we're done now. The spill suppression is intended to be used when you're working with a green screen or a colored background where the color is spilling onto the character in front of the screen. That won't help any. And the color correction really is the equivalent of what's called the proc amp effect, where you can adjust the hue and saturation, things like that, which you can do with the fast color corrector anyways. So that's kind of superfluous. So these first two parts are the most important here, where you're working with nature, essentially. Let's move on over to the time lapse, which is something where it's black or it's dark. A whole different kind of scene here, and you wonder if the ultra key will work on a dark area like this. So we just select this, make it active, double click on it to bring it in, do the same routine as before. I want to make sure I go into the clip far enough where it's really pretty dark, like right around there. The eyedropper tool, hold down the controller command key to make it fat, to take that 5x5 five five pixel range. Got that, and bam, look at that. Already settled down pretty well. Let's look at the alpha channel to see how it works. See, it looks kind of dark gray as opposed to black, so it's not a totally good matte. Go back to matte generation again. Go through the process you did before, make that area darker. I'm going to make it black right there. Pull this down, go to the highlight. Not too many highlights here in this dark area. Plenty of shadows, though. Let's see if we can work on the shadows a little bit. No. Nope. Tolerance is the color. That's mainly blacks. Not much tolerance there. Now the pedestal is going to be the guy who pulls things down for us, gets most of the blacks. 
Perhaps it would have been better if I had taken my sample right there. So I'm going to go back and try again. Click on this and sample right there. Let's see if that works any better. Same little process as before. I think we probably were better off where we started. Hmm. So I'll go back and click this over here where that area is different. There you go. That works reasonably well for this particular scene. I mean, the Luma key probably would be better here. Let's go down to the composite view so we can see how it really looks. And when you have the composite view open, you open up the matte cleanup and you see how that works. You can pull it in a little bit or spread it out. There you go. Soften the edges a bit. And you can see it more dramatically here than you did with the other clip. Look for areas of contrast. The midpoint again has a little bit of an effect, but not much. So there we go. <laughs> kind of wild, huh? All right, let's move on to something that the Ultra Key really was built for, and that's when you're working in a green screen. Let's select that. I have the Luma curve on here already to help out when I use the color key, but maybe with the Ultra Key it won't make that much difference. I think it'll just help to make it look brighter like that. So I'm going to turn it off for the time being and just try the Ultra Key without Luma curve. Double click Ultra Key. There we go. Add it there. Same routine as before. Get the eyedropper. Now I'm looking around, you're trying to find kind of the worst case scenario. I think down here is the darker area, so the average would be really dark. Pretty light, so I'm going to go for the sort of average area here by holding down the control or command and clicking there, and voila! I mean, instantly it works. It's really quite amazing. The color key, remember, had trouble with the corners here? This thing went right down to the corners, nailed it really well. You see a little bit of haloing around it, but look at the detail in his hair. That's phenomenal that the key does that much detail in this digital video clip. This is not a really high quality clip, and it's doing pretty well there. Let's go into the matte mode here, look at the alpha channel, and take a look at that. Pretty good. You just want to darken things up in the corners there a bit and make sure you don't have any transparency there. You don't want any grays there. You want white again. So let's go to the matte generation here and take a look at that. I start adjusting things this way. Rock. And I can see it's getting gray there. That's not very good. We need to find some kind of balance between the two. Right about there. We are getting some transparency along the edges here though. But we're not done yet. Just going to work on it now with the highlight and try to pull that in a bit. Look at the shadows now. That should fill in the shadows pretty well there. Still have a little bit of gray along here. Tolerance won't change much, but bring it to the edges a bit. Now the pedestal is the guy that seems to have the most effect here, and that works reasonably well. We got some transparency here, though. That might show up when we put the color behind it. But this DJ is so colorful, maybe nobody will notice that. That's reasonably good. Let's close that down and go back to the composite view now. This is the area where things are spilling through, but you know, that looks like lights are falling out of it as opposed to things are spilling through. But let's open up the matte cleanup anyways. Take a look at choke. If we want to pull it in or push it out a bit. There's this little halo again, but I think we can fix that up with a little bit of softening. Right there. It looks pretty good. Looking for some contrast now. Not getting much there. A little bit of tolerance there. A little bit of midpoint there. Now, spill suppression comes into play with the green screen, but he was far enough away from the green screen that I don't think we have much spill. We'll try the desaturate just a bit here to try to take care of that spill along his shoulders there, but there's not much going on there. Yeah, we don't want to take that in too much. I think the spill is pretty good shape anyways to begin with. I don't think we're going to see much spill fix here anyways. So that's how you use Ultra Key, and really the circumstance was intended to be used up against the green screen there. Let's see how this works. <laughs> Pretty good. We might want to choke it in just a little bit, I'm thinking, because you see that green on his shoulders there, so I would maybe pull it in just a touch here. See how it's coming in, getting rid of that green on his shoulders? Yeah, that's that looks better. Okay, let's do one more thing here. We have this green screen here where my student Bruce Philpot put four of himself in one scene. This is one of the shots where he used a green screen to get him in with three other guys, three other versions of himself. What we want to do is make that green screen transparent, so guess what we're going to use? Use the old Ultra key again. Just double click on that, bring it in. This will look a little different. I'm going to click right down here where it's dark. That's kind of the average area there. And I'll hold on the controller command and do that. And I'm not sure if you noticed that, but that's kind of hazy looking. That's not a really good job there at the get go like this. Let's take a look at the alpha channel and I can see that that's too soft. That's not dark enough. So let's again go to the matte generation. That's the first step here when we do this, sort of dealing with the transparency. Look how we're making everything else transparent too. So that's not helping us much at all. Try the highlights a little bit, pull that back. Again, not so much, but now the shadows should help us out. Right there in the edge, look how the transparency on the right hand side is showing up. We don't want that. So that's about as far as we can push transparency, but the tolerance might help a little bit, but not much, but it's the pedestal that should bring this guy down. There we go. That's great. 
That's perfect. And this stuff down here, we're going to cover with a garbage mat anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. So that's a pretty clean mat. He looks pretty sharp. Very little transparency. There's a touch right there where the handle of the hand card is. Let's close that down and take a look at the composite version now to see how that works. That looks excellent, really. That's pretty darn good. You do see a little bit of transparency, though, in the hand card. See how the chair shows through there? Let's go over here to mat clean up and see if we can fix that a little bit. Eh, I think we're okay there. It's not so dramatic. We'll have to just have to accept that's eh, a little better. We got the contrast to fix that up a little bit. Pull the bid point that way. There you go. Now you really can't tell the chair is back there behind his green screen. The last thing we need to deal with here is this little arch right there. If I turn off the ultra key, it reminds you that the green screen was held up by this little rim. But we'll deal with that using a garbage mat in the next lesson when we put four versions of Bruce here in one scene.